Good morning, everybody. Good morning and thank you to everyone for making the time to join us here today as we celebrate the arts at Queens. I am Karen Bertrand and I am the Vice Principal Advancement at Queens and a proud ArtSign 94 grad. I will also be your host for the next hour. Joining me today are Queens 21st Principal and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Patrick Dean, Daniel Bader, President and CEO of Bader Philanthropies, Isabel Bader, LLD 07, the wife of Alfred Bader and an advisor to Bader Philanthropies, and Maddie Andrews, a Masters of Arts candidate in art history. We have some exciting news to share with you today and I'm sure you will have some questions. So do feel free to submit your questions in the Q&A available at the bottom of your screen. And if you are media joining us today, a representative of the media, please feel free to identify yourself in that Q&A so we can prioritize your questions. We will try to answer all of the questions before we wrap up in the next hour. I'd also like to let everyone know that we will be recording this announcement and it will be available online to view in the next couple of days. But let's begin by first acknowledging that even though we are meeting virtually today, we should never forget that Queens was built on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. And we are grateful for the opportunity to work, study, learn and teach on these lands. It is vitally important that we pay tribute to traditional landholders and remember that even as we continue to build and grow Queens, we are ultimately visitors on their land. Now I would like to introduce our first speaker. Patrick Dean became our 21st Principal and Vice Chancellor last July after serving nine years as the President of McMaster University. He previously served at Queen's as Vice Principal Academic from 2005 to 2010. Patrick recently initiated a conversation with the entire university community about what matters to Queen's its future and the issues that we face. And he is keeping that conversation going during these turbulent times. Please join me in welcoming Patrick Dean. Thanks very much, Karen. Just, uh, just this. Well, I'm delighted to be here today uh, to share with you uh, some very, very exciting news. Uh, as many of you know, uh, the late Dr. Alfred Bader and his wife Isabel have been very generous donors to Queen's for many decades. Their gifts have helped to advance knowledge and research across many different disciplines and have enhanced the learning experience that we offer our students here at the campus uh, in Kingston. But they've also helped us to establish a footprint uh, in the UK through the gift of Hurst Monsu Castle, uh, at which we established the Beta International Study Center. I'm very proud to be able to share news about the next transformative gift by Beta Philanthropies Inc. to Queen's University. It will also help to further our vision for the visual arts as an innovative, inclusive, and compelling program of research excellence, exhibition, and experiential learning. Beta Philanthropies is donating 40 million US dollars to Queens to create a new home for the Beta collection of art in a major revitalization of the Agnes Etherington Art Center. An extraordinary gift. This equals a $54 million cash gift in Canadian terms, which makes it the single largest cash gift to our university in its history. And although in an online format, it's very difficult to do. <laughs> this investment will transform the Agnes and make Queen's home to the largest university art museum in Canada. The renewed facility will enhance Queen's ability to care for and to showcase the Agnes's magnificent art collections, uh, including uh, the more than 200 paintings in the Beta collection and the collection of Canadian dress. 
The power of art should never be underestimated. It ignites our creative pursuits. It speaks to the very core of our humanity. And even, I would say especially, during trying and challenging times like this, we've seen countless instances of ways in which the arts have provided solace and optimism and brought us together to understand our shared history and culture. Today's announcement is an exciting step towards making Queens one of the world's foremost leaders in arts education. And I'm gonna take advantage of my position here to be the first person publicly to thank the entire Beta family and Beta Philanthropies Inc. for their vision and for their absolutely wonderful commitment to our university, Queens. Now, if I may, I, I'd like to welcome Daniel Bader, CEO of Bader Philanthropies Inc., to say a little more about this tremendous gift. Daniel, over to you. Thank you, Principal. It's great to be with everybody today. We are truly uh, excited about this day. This is a momentous moment, not only for Queen's University, but also for the foundation. This is a moment where we really build on the legacy of the contributions of my father, Dr. Alfred Bader and his wife, Isabel Bader, to Queen's University over decades. Together they have uh, given to the university in an extraordinary way. Not only as was mentioned in various academic programs, but certainly in the area of art. This is an opportunity to build a world-class art center that combines both academic museum together and a state-of-the-art yet unseen concept that will revolutionize the way people experience and explore art. It's bringing together exhibition space for art and costumes, visible storage for art and costumes, an outdoor art square, the art history department, and the art conservation department, and probably even a few things that we can't even think of yet. There have been many previous investments by the family at Queen's University, which are gonna to come together under this new development, including the Bader Collection, comprised of over 500 paintings and sculpture works on art that span the 14th through the mid 19th centuries. This collection, as you probably know, includes four Rembrandts. Also will house the collection of Canadian dress, the Bader Curator and Researcher in European Art, the Bader Chair in Northern Baroque Art, the Bader Chair in Southern Baroque Art, the Bader Chair in Art Conservation, the Bader Fellow in Textile Conservation and Research, and the Bader Graduate Intern in Textile Conservation and Research. So you can see we've been investing as a family and as a foundation in Queens in art for a very long time. And this is an exciting time that this is all coming together in what we know will be a state of the art, state of the world art facility. I want to thank Queens University for their partnership in this project, for their vision and bringing it all together. I want to thank our board of directors and our staff at the foundation. And I certainly, and most importantly, I want to thank Isabel Bader for everything that she has dreamt of and thought of as we get to this point of embarking on this adventure. So thank you, Principal. Thank you for the kind welcome. And thank you to all the staff at Queens University that are making this possible. Daniel, thanks so much. That's, uh, well, that, that is just such an extraordinary history of generosity to the university. And I'm, I'm, I'm deeply moved uh, today uh, to be able to acknowledge that history. So thanks very much, Daniel. It's a, it's a gift that has huge impact on the university, obviously. Uh, but it's also uh, an enormous investment in our local community. Obviously, it's, it's a big investment in the arts community across the country, but it also will bring significant economic impact to our overall Kingston uh, and Eastern Ontario communities. So to celebrate this uh, and to offer some remarks from our local government, we have some recorded greetings to share uh, from Ian Arthur, Member of Provincial Parliament for Kingston and the Islands, and from our Mayor, Brian Patterson. 
Hi everybody, this is Ian Arthur, the MPP for Kingston and the Islands. This is a tremendous opportunity for both Queens, uh, the students who attend it, and the greater Kingston community. Having one of the largest on-campus art collections in Canada is going to pull people in from across the province, across the country, and hopefully from other countries as well. And it's going to inspire and help support a brilliant and flourishing Kingston Arts community, and I can't wait to see what they do. I just want to say congratulations to the Agnes and a heartfelt thank you for this incredible donation. It's wonderful to see the community continue to grow and Queens continue to flourish. Hello everyone, I'm Brian Patterson, Mayor of Kingston, and it's my great pleasure to join all of you in celebrating the future redevelopment of the Agnes Etherington Arts Centre. Now, with this redevelopment, the Agnes may be the largest art museum on any university campus in Canada, which is exciting for Queens, but it's also very exciting for Kingston. The Agnes is definitely a treasure and a pillar within our local arts sector. It contributes to our cultural vitality, drawing visitors and tourists to our city, and inspiring future generations of artists right here in our community. There's no question that arts and culture contribute mightily to our quality of life, to our mental health. In fact, that importance has probably never been more stark than it is in the midst of this global pandemic. So it's exciting to be able to look forward to this new opportunity for redevelopment of the Agnes and more space for education and a deeper appreciation for the arts. Now, of course, this wouldn't be possible without the incredible generosity of Isabel Bader, Daniel Bader, and Bader Philanthropies. And so on behalf of the city of Kingston, I just want to express my sincere thanks and appreciation for their donation that makes this possible. I've had a chance to tour and explore the Agnes a number of times over the years, so I'm very much looking forward to what the future redevelopment of the Agnes may bring. As Patrick mentioned, it is hard sometimes to recreate the, um, the sound of applause in a virtual environment, but I would invite all of the guests uh, on the call today for this announcement from Bader Philanthropies and the Bader family to please pay attention if you're not already doing so to the chat uh, on this screen. There are accolades and uh, notes of appreciation coming in and applause uh, coming in from a number of the guests and, and I hope that you can enjoy those in lieu of the sound of applause that you so greatly deserve. At this point, I would now like to introduce our next speaker. Maddie Andrews is the Master's of Arts candidate in art history. She first became involved with the Agnes as an undergraduate and as a volunteer in the student docent program. The following year, she was named head docent and began an internship in the programming office. During her internship, Maddie developed Art Hive at Agnes, a weekly drop-in that encourages positive mental health practices through art making. Maddie has continued to work with Art Hive at Agnes since the launch, and at the outset of the pandemic, she helped transition the program online. Maddie joined the reception team in April 2019, and she looks forward to returning to the Agnes when it reopens. Please welcome Maddie Andrews. Thank you. I would like to express gratitude on behalf of all students to Bader Philanthropies and the Bader family. This gift cements the status of Queen's University as a passionate champion of the next generation of artists, art historians, and art conservators. Amidst all the uncertainty in the world now, this announcement not only provides much needed good news, but also reinforces the importance of the arts. The past several months have demonstrated the increasing need for healing and camaraderie and how the arts are capable of providing this. I will forever be indebted to the Agnes. As a student of the arts, the value of the rich collections, incredible opportunities, and commitment to student learning cannot be understated. Not only have my academic studies been strengthened by proximity to these diverse collections, but my involvement as a volunteer and employee has uniquely prepared me for my future career path. The revitalization of the Agnes means more students will have the opportunity to grow and explore. 
This generous gift will enable future students in all academic disciplines to interact more directly with the works in the collections while gaining a deeper understanding of these artistic and cultural treasures. Having the largest art gallery on a Canadian university campus will attract students in art history, art conservation, and the fine arts to Queen's University. With the new facility, new chair, and new equipment, our art conservation students will make valuable contributions to the world's top museums and institutes. This generous gift promotes Queen's University as a center dedicated to innovative research and learning. To the Bader family, thank you. My entire university experience has been shaped by your generosity. From a student at the Bader International Study Center in England, to my involvement at the Agnes Etherington Art Center, your family has provided the most incredible opportunities and supported my journey. With this gift, the reach of your impact spreads even further and future generations of students will owe you an enormous thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Maddie. Now we will hear from some of the other individuals who will be making good use of the new facility. Barbara Crow, Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science, Norman Verano, Head of the Department of Art History and Art Conservation at Queens, and Alicia Boutelier, the Interim Director of the Agnes Etherington Art Center. Hello, my name is Barbara Crow, and I am the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science. And I am really pleased to have the opportunity to extend our most sincerest gratitude to the Bader family for their transformational gift to the Agnes. At this time, more than ever, we have seen such importance and significance around culture and how important representation, uh, creativity, and the visual have been to uh, bringing community uh, hope and humanity. It certainly will be the case that many of our students, staff, and faculty are now going to have access to one of the most incredible collections, the Bader Collection, and we're going to see the integration of teaching and learning and research uh, in this uh, most amazing space. So to the Bader family, so thank you so much for uh, this gift. I'm Norman Verano, head of the Department of Art History and Art Conservation at Queen's University. I want to take this moment to thank Bader Philanthropies for their extraordinarily generous and forward-looking lead gift that will allow us to reimagine the Agnes Etherington Art Center and expand its impact across the university campus. What really excites me in this uh, development is the potential to radically reconfigure the role that university collections play in the lives of faculty members, students, and the broader communities that we serve. I think this will give us an opportunity to um, build social connectivity through the collections that we have at the university and to promote new ways of interdisciplinary research, uh, bringing together different streams of art history and art study including technical art history and digital art history with art conservation and uh, very different analytical techniques that are explored and uh, developed in art conservation as well as other areas such as curatorial and museum studies um, and other um, areas that are of significance right now in the department. I want to thank the many individuals and organizations who have really stepped up and uh, provided visionary leadership with gifts. Isabel Overton Bader, Bader Philanthropies, Marjorie Bernstein, and the Jaroslavsky Foundation. Thank you all. Without your support, without your trust, without your vision, we could not accomplish this. Thank you. It is such an honor and exciting prospect to be able to envision a revitalized Agnes through this most generous gift. An Agnes that engages the university and the community both close by and beyond through expanded and innovative spaces. One that inspires research, excitement, wellness, and action in this moment 
when we are even more keenly aware of the importance and the power of art, we are mindful of this responsibility and the incredible opportunity that this gift provides. With the Revitalized Agnes, new forums will be created for students, scholars, artists, patrons, and community members, and new facilities for sharing our renowned art collections, including the Bader Collection, and for welcoming art from around the world. Such wonderful news. A big thank you to Bader Philanthropies and the Bader family for this extraordinary support. Thank you very much. Uh, today's announcement is as clear an indication as you could wish for uh, of Queen's passion for the arts, uh, for fostering the next generation of artists and art conservators, and to generally promoting uh, a life that is full and enriched by the arts in all their dimensions. This announcement, though, is in fact uh, the culmination of a series of important gifts uh, that have been announced over the past month. Uh, as you heard from Dr. Verano, just uh, last week we announced uh, a three million US dollar gift from Dr. Isabel Bader to establish the Bader Chair in Art Conservation that will help students and researchers become world leaders in imaging science, uh, an emerging field that is revolutionizing art conservation. And this gift complements another $1 million gift we received from the Jaroslawski Foundation, which allowed us to acquire several pieces of technology that can examine art at an atomic and molecular level. And this can help researchers better understand how art deteriorates and help them to develop new and better conservation techniques. And I should note that Queens is in fact one of only a small number of institutions that has this technology uh, it can also be found, for example, at the Getty Conservation Institute in Los Angeles and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Also this month, uh, Marjorie Bernstein donated $3.5 million in memory of her late daughter, Jennifer Velva Bernstein, uh, to support the Isabel Bader Center for the Performing Arts. The gift will help the Isabel provide artistic programming for students patrons and audiences, as well as education and training opportunities. And in recognition of that gift, we will be renaming the performance hall in honor of Jennifer. I would also like to add that this coming weekend, we will host the Beta and Overton Canadian Cello Competition, which has been generously supported by Isabel Beta and Beta Philanthropies. And eight very talented cellists will be competing for a $20,000 prize, and the competition will be streamed online by the CBC. It's important to note that all of these gifts have occurred over the past month, and that, that's quite astounding. We're incredibly grateful for, for this support. But I'd also be remiss if I didn't pause to take note of some very other significant donations made to the arts at Queen's over the past several years. Of course, the Aubrey and Marla Dan Foundation's investment in Queens has helped to elevate the Dan School of Drama and Music to become the preeminent school for performing arts and music education here in Canada. I also want to remember our alumnus, Alexander Jeffrey, who left a very generous gift in his estate to benefit the Isabel Bader Center for the Performing Arts and the Dan School by supporting artistic programming for students patrons and audiences, as well as other educational and operational activities. Thanks to all of these gifts, we're well positioned to enable our students to make valuable contributions to the world and to continue inspiring the world through art. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Isabel Bader to welcome her here today and to thank her yet again for her extraordinary support and generosity to our university. Isabel. Can you hear me? Yep. 
Irene. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, well, a great deal has been said about the family and art and all the things that we're interested in. And as far as I guess the family is concerned, it begins with Alfred's coming to Queens. Anybody who knows Alfred knows that he believed that, and it was true, of course, that it had completely changed his life. He was welcomed when he was released from the, what had been prisoner of war camp, uh, when the other universities would not take him. He had always been interested in art. As a child in Vienna, he was surrounded by art. Uh, he bought his first sketch, um, an old master sketch for a painting, which is now in the Minneapolis Art Museum, uh, when he was 10, instead of a camera, which he wasn't interested in. And um, he was uh, invited after he had been to Queens and got his various degrees to donate a painting and became very interested in improving the collection that was here at the time. I have always been interested in the arts, um, particularly in music and drama, and um, in costume. I uh, made hundreds of costumes for a drama school, which we began in England and had for 32 years. So I uh, use the old master paintings for uh, advice on how to get ahead with what I wanted to produce. Uh, when Alfred and I um, first came to Queens together, well actually when we first met in Toronto, the first person we saw was um, David McTavish. And um, so the connection has always been very close. And um, his vision for Green's uh, art museum uh, was encouraged also by having um, become very friendly with the uh, art museum in uh, Oberlin. And his vision was that one day the um, museum at Queens would be as good as the one at Oberlin. Uh, so that is what he has worked towards. And I think probably he's managed that. Um, the chair in conservation uh, it was particularly interesting to me because I feel it's vital to conserve the paintings, keep uh, attention to what is going on in the technical field and so on. And um, that uh, it was particularly interesting for me to support. Um, there is one major um, art conservation program which has a doctoral program and that's in Delaware. And uh, if with this uh, new uh, revitalization of things here, we'll hope that at Queens perhaps they may one day have it also, it will be then one of the two um, conservation programs in North America to offer a doctoral program. Um, music has been tremendously important to me. Alfred loved music, but he was more or less tone deaf, unfortunately. He always regretted that. Um, and our first um, major movement in that direction was the violin competition, which was held a few years ago. Uh, the next one, of course, is the cello competition, which will be held this week. The COVID-19 has changed the whole technicality of things, made it more difficult. But um, we would love to have managed to get to, to this program at Queen's. Not possible. So uh, we will just be most grateful that the CBC has picked it up and that we will be able to see the wonderful music that these cellists can produce uh, to find how remarkable it is and interesting that they have all decided
to make their domicile in Canada for these important work that they're doing all around the world, as you will learn. I just am very pleased, obviously, that the whole thing is going forward and that Greens has picked up and will so do their very best to make a marvelous university of the arts in what we have worked with. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Isabel Bader. Thank you sincerely to you and to Dr. Alfred Bader and Bader Philanthropies for your continued support of what is clearly an extraordinary vision. We will be eternally grateful. We now have uh, several minutes left. We have about 15 minutes left uh, to answer questions from those of you who have tuned in for the announcement today. I will just remind those of you from the media who may have some questions to close, please do identify yourself when you submit your questions and we'll try to prioritize those as we go through the Q&A. Let me begin first uh, with the first question though. And um, this one I think I will pose probably to uh, Patrick, to you. With everything that's going on in the world, why did Queens decide to make this announcement now? Well, in the first instance, it, it's so exciting. We couldn't contain ourselves. The news had to be out. It's such a wonderful gift and will have such a transformative effect uh, in the university. But a number of the speakers did comment, and I think this is really to the point, about the importance of art in affirming uh, human values, in, a in affirming a positive future for, for um, not only our country and our community, but more broadly people around the world. The arts are critically important and never uh, were more important than they are now and will be in the future. And this gift is uh, hugely facilitating and supportive of that project. So uh, obviously we wanted to announce it, get the news out as quickly as we could and begin the work on this exciting project because it really is going to be uh, transformative in the future. Thank you. Our next question is from uh, Gemma from the Kingstonist. And Gemma has asked, how will this investment in the Agnes ensure that diverse and indigenous art is showcased and celebrated in the museum? Patrick, I'll let you uh, respond to that one as well. Well, I think uh, this, this is a gift which will obviously improve our ability to showcase the entire collection, all the holdings of the university, and make possible a much more diverse uh, array of programming uh, than we can in our present facilities. So I think at, at that level, it, it, will, it will make possible many things uh, that have been difficult to do in the past. The collection is very rich, uh, and uh, one need, we need to display it and to make it available to the, the general public in, in all its dimensions. Right. And Peter from the Kingston Whig Standard has a couple of questions in response to um, a mention of the concept having been unseen, support for it and as yet unseen concept. Is there a plan and a timeline regarding the changes that will be made for the Agnes? When will it change the footprint of the Agnes? And how long ago did the idea of revitalizing the Agnes start and, and why now? That's a lot of questions and I'll turn them all over to you, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go for the last of those first. So I, I hadn't yet started in this job when uh, uh, the previous principal, Daniel Wolf, called me up to say he had had an extremely exciting conversation with Daniel Bader uh, and, and with Isabel about the possibility of a major gift that would transform uh, the Agnes in this way. Uh, so that is about the timeline. Uh, we might ask Daniel when the idea was conceived at his end, but uh, so far as the university became aware of it, I think uh, it is about a year in, in, in a year ago that it, it first came under consideration. There's been a lot of work done in that time. So uh, I, what I can say is I've been part of many discussions uh, of involving the leadership of the university, um, and Beta Philanthropies and the Beta family to talk about what this might be. So it's not exactly 
a blind investment. Everyone knows what we're aiming to do here. It's going to be a very exciting facility that, as you heard from Daniel, will bring together exhibition, teaching, and other forms of space that will make uh, the Agnes a center for art, exhibition, education, uh, and appreciation. So uh, there are a number of uh, stages to planning a project uh, of this scale, and we are quite far along. So uh, I think um, it, it will be some time before we're ready to, to begin physical work on the site. Uh, but we're aiming to do this within a, as, as short a time frame as we can. It, it's so exciting. And if I could just add to uh, what the principal has shared, we will be embarking upon a formal visioning exercise to determine exactly what the, um, the specific plans will look like for the revitalization of the Agnes. And as, as Patrick mentioned, it will take some time uh, to go through the full completion of this, uh, not just this exercise, but then the actual revitalization itself. So we're targeting probably in and around 2024 before we are actually able to truly um, enjoy the benefits of, of this uh, revitalization as a, as a broader community. Another question, and I do uh, continue to invite those of you, please feel free to enter your questions in the Q&A if you have some. Uh, but another question from Sam, our rector at Queen's University. What specific programming will be available to students from other faculties and programs, if we know that yet? Hmm. Uh, we certainly don't know in concrete terms, but I think uh, uh, you heard from Dr. Verano that uh, the, the intention here is to, to build programming across a wide array of areas and subject matter. So uh, the goal of the Agnes is to be a resource to the whole community uh, and obviously to enjoy the arts and to learn from the arts. Uh, you don't have to be an art student and uh, that would be our goal. Uh, this is a resource not just for the whole university and everyone in every discipline within it, uh, but it's also a resource for our community, the Kingston community, and much more broadly. So um, what I can say, Sam, is there will most definitely be programming that will uh, have appeal for students in all faculties. Um, just can't say precisely what that will look like right now. Okay. All right, and then at this time I have one final question, at least uh, so far. And uh, again, this is for you, Patrick. You mentioned that this gift will represent a significant economic impact for Kingston and, and the Eastern Ontario communities. Can you tell us more about what that anticipated economic impact might be? Yeah, I think that is a, a very important question. And here I'll go back to the mayor's comments uh, that we heard. Uh, uh, obviously, when you have a major art center uh, in a city that already draws uh, very signi significant numbers of visitors uh, uh, year round, um, this will drive up the numbers. This will become a center uh, for, for people with an interest in art to come and visit to in enjoy the, the, the art that is on display uh, at, at different times of the year. And if you take together all of the, the components of Queen's uh, artistic operations, so the Isabel Bader Center for the Performing Arts, the Agnes Etherington Arts Center, it, in all of those areas in which the Bader family have made such extraordinary investments, the benefits to the city are incalculable in terms of their ability to attract visitors uh, who will uh, stay in this community, enjoy the other uh, um, amenities that this community has to offer, and, and, and generally uh, um, realize the full potential of the city of Kingston as a destination for, for visitors. So it's very exciting. I mean, similarly, uh, it, it, the, the, uh, the uh, revitalized Agnes will become a scholarly center. So it'll not just be bringing in tourists with an interest in art perhaps, but there will be scholars and student, students of, of art. And as Isabel said, our goal in the long term to have uh, the other doctoral program in art conservation uh, on this continent. So the potential for the community is enormous. Uh, uh, and as we think about the way in which the project will, will uh, take shape, we'll be thinking about ways in which to maximize those benefits. 
Wonderful. And Daniel, I'd like to give you the final word if we can. Uh, we've talked about the extraordinary continued support of both the Bader family and Bader Philanthropies for Queen's University and particularly in the area of the arts. But what specifically motivated uh, you and your team and your family to make this gift to the Agnes? Well, thank you. I, you know, I, it goes back to many years of discussions. Really, I would say in the living room of my, my father in his house and with Isabel talking about the collection. So I grew up in an extraordinary house with an extraordinary art collection. And it was always understood that that collection would go to Queens University. And when it started to go over the years uh, and, it, and the collection at Queens University started to build into being what it is today, a world-class European collection, we knew that at some point that the facility would have to be upgraded to a point where it could really house something of this caliber. I want to say very carefully that we have all respect for the current Agnes facility, and in particular, we have respect for the, the historic house. The historic house uh, will remain, and I believe will, if altered, would only be improved as required by Canadian law but it will stand as it is and it's all its beauty. But we know that there has to be additional facilities available for all types of art, not just European art, Canadian art, indigenous art, and other art as well, um, all have to be displayed in a way that is really uh, very accessible to, to everyone who comes to, to Kingston, to the university and to that facility. So we've been thinking about this, dreaming about this for a long time, I guess you could say, and um, really, just so pleased with the combined vision of the university, of the family, of the foundation, all coming together with something that we know is going to be extraordinary for everybody. Thank you so much, Daniel. And, and again, uh, please allow me to extend my personal thanks to you, to your entire team at Bader Philanthropies, and to uh, the whole Bader family. As we mentioned at the beginning, we will have the recording of this event up on our website in the next couple of days. So do be sure to look for it at www.queensu.ca slash alumni. And I want to remind everybody that the semi-final rounds of the Bader and Overton Canadian Cello Competition are taking place tomorrow at noon, starting, starting at noon, sorry, Eastern Standard Time. And you can take in all the action for the competition at www.cbc.ca slash music. Thank you everyone for joining us for this important announcement this morning. And we'll leave you with these final messages from members of the Queen's community. In my mind, the Agnes has always existed as the preeminent university gallery in Canada in terms of its vision, creativity, and professionalism, and given the breadth of its collection, the diversity of its programming, and its reputation locally and nationally. This next chapter will see the Agnes become something even more remarkable. As a result of the extraordinary gift of Bader Philanthropies, the Agnes is now positioned to play an even greater role in the visual arts in Canada and to join the leading research art museums internationally. Art conservation provides us with a lens to focus very discreetly on a place and in a time and helps us to embrace more closely the human spirit. Over the years, I've observed the Agnes becoming a national leader in historical and contemporary art and museology. And a revitalized facility can really help us to join um, discussions on an international scale. The Bader Gift is a milestone in the history of Canadian art philanthropy and is especially significant due to the stress on artists and art institutions in Canada at this time. I am so thrilled to be a MAC grad and offer my heartfelt congratulations to the Agnes and the Art Conservation Program as they move toward this bright and bold future. I just want to give a heartfelt congratulations to Queen's and the Art Conservation Program on this very exciting announcement and the new future that it will bring. I would like to congratulate the Agnes and Queen's on this transformative gift 
and on behalf of the advisory board to express our sincere thanks and appreciation to Dr. Isabel Bader, Daniel Bader, and Bader Philanthropies, Inc.